What's up everyone, this is Josh Rubin. Today I wanna to talk about histamine intolerance, and this is a big one, so stay tuned. But before we get started, please like this video, show us a little support. Hit that subscription button and hit that notification button so every single Wednesday when we put out a video, you watching this video get notified. Let's jump in. Histamine intolerance. It has become the norm. Everyone is histamine intolerant. Foods are bad. Stay away from these foods because they contain histamine. And this is where we've gone wrong. Number one, if they contain histamine and we can't really ingest them, how can I actually eat them, right? We really don't have a histamine intolerance. No such thing, right? You're not born with a histamine intolerance. You're not born with mast cell, you know, issues. It's the same thing. We're just using different names here. Um, Number two, how we're going at it all wrong is we're blaming food, right? It's like we put a dollar into a change machine and instead of giving us four quarters, it gives us two and we say, right, I have a dollar intolerance. That's the problem, right? It doesn't make any sense. It's the system that it's going into that makes it the problem. And we have to truly understand this and that's why the histamine diet does not work. Yes, it might keep you nice and comfortable in your little comfortable room with pillows and cozy, but the second you step outside of that room, boom, you're gonna get those responses. So it doesn't heal you, it just suppresses everything. And we don't wanna go there because we can't live a normal, healthy life. And we've helped, we've helped so many people with histamine issues. And it's not ta about taking histoblock. It's not taking about and taking any of those supplements because you're doing the same thing. You're chasing the effect. You're not really saying, why is this happening, right? So why is this happening? Why is this happening? And, and why, you know, we've been in this industry total 22 years. How come 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we never heard of this and now it's become such the norm? Well, you have things that affect inflammation in the body. Um, and when I say inflammation, really what's happening is you have many things in our environment that are affecting copper metabolism. And copper metabolism is very huge. And this happens in the liver because your liver stores copper. Retinol is carried there by the TTR protein. And retinol is the key that loads copper into ATP, 7A, and B enzymes in the liver so we can produce ceruloplasmin, right? Which is bioavailable copper. And a big piece of this is ceruloplasmin Number one, allows us to activate oxygen to produce energy, but it produces all our copper-rich antioxidants, which help us put out the little fires, which help us fight free radicals, and which help us regulate stress in the system, right? We need these antioxidants. Catalase, cytochrome oxidase, superoxide dismutase, glutathione peroxidase, the list goes on, it's endless, right? We need those. Secondly, when we talk about histamine, let's say just simplify it. When we talk about histamine clearance in the body, we're talking about enzymes and methyltransferase, which happens in the central nervous system. And then the DO enzyme, diamine oxidase in the gut. Everyone knows that DO enzyme, right? The central atom of the DO enzyme is B vitamin C and most importantly, copper dependent. So if we don't have copper, this enzyme can't do what it's designed to do. And when you think of minerals, which is copper, among other things. Think of them as keys that start the car, right? Without these minerals, you can't start a car. You have the best looking car in your driveway. Without the key, it's useless. So they turn the car on, they activate the enzymes. So if the enzymes are there, but you don't have the keys, the enzyme becomes useless. This is why minerals activate hundreds, if not way more than that, enzymatic reactions in the body, right? So we have things like synthetic supplements, right? We have vitamin D, vitamin A, synthetic supplement, zinc, and calcium. Just the over intake of these things affect copper metabolism, right? Vitamin D depletes the liver retinol. Without retinol, we can't metabolize copper. Simple as that. Uh, zinc, it's been shown that zinc supplementation, not from food, we always wanna get the food, increases metallophionine in the liver, metallophionine binds copper, we chelate it. Now we don't have copper, no antioxidants, we can't activate the DEO enzyme, right? Some examples. Other things are a lot of you know, psychiatric drugs, SSRIs, birth control pills, uh, cardiovascular medications, a lot of medications affect copper metabolism negatively. Now I'm not saying go off them, I'm just saying be aware. Third, if I said birth control pills, that's one of them. Third, we're talking about foods, 
You know, we're talking about high fructose corn syrup. We're talking about glyphosate, pesticides, blow up copper metabolism, um, ba basically chelates it from the body, right? So there's many things that have gone to this place of affecting copper metabolism. But even before that, it's chronic stress, right? So what happens with chronic stress? Well, chronic stress is when the demands being placed in the system exceed what the system can handle, right? That's like going shopping, spending $5,000 when you only have $1,000 in your bank account. That's how we're living. We're doing that chronically, right? It's really not a bad thing to have a credit card if you pay it off, right? So we don't accrue the debt. But what mo what do most people do? Just like I did in college. We keep going, it's awesome. We don't have to pay for it before we know it. A little bit here and there and it adds up and now you're in debt. Like crazy. This is chronic stress, right? We should be able to live here, become stressed, but be come back down. But we're all chronically stressed. Well, this chronic stress produces hormones, ACTH, cortisol, etc. The problem with this is it affects copper metabolism, right? Um, it, again, it causes your liver to produce metallothionine, which binds copper. And what happens? Now we don't have any oxidants. We can't activate the DO enzyme. We chelate minerals. It's simple as that. So it's the stress. It's the synthetic supplements. It's the medications. It's the synthetic foods. It's the high fructose corn syrup. It's the glyphosate, which is a huge one. All these things get us to a place where we are chronically inflamed because in a simple sense, we are living beyond our means. This is chronic stress. And the more we live beyond our means and the less copper we have and the less antioxidants we can produce, we go from oxidative stress of the cell level to inflammation to calcification. We go from a little fire to roast marshmallows to an under control fire that we might be able to put out to a 500,000 acre forest fire that is impossible to put out. But we're trying to put out with fire extinguishers, which is impossible, right? The more inflammation we produce, the more copper gets chelated from the body, right? But also the more inflammation we produce, what happens? The more histamine we produce. It's like, and I always use this example, it's like having, you know, people are, are dropping ball, um, mulch off of your driveway and you wanna, you know, spread it but they keep bringing in truckloads and it's just you and you just can't keep up because there's not enough guys to unload the, the mulch and spread it where you want to put it in your yard, right? So it just keeps building up and building up and building up. That's what's happening when we're chronic inflamed, right? Our body needs histamine. We don't excrete all of our histamine, you know, through the kidneys. We actually keep some of it because we need it to fight, inf fight inflammation. But we, when it becomes chronic, this is the problem at the same time affecting copper metabolism, right? So it's that excess production and the inability to clear it because we can't turn on the enzyme. That is a histamine issue, but we love blaming food instead of saying, how did I get here? How have I been living for the past five, 10, 15, 20 years that has gotten me to this place of chronic stress, that has gotten me to this place of zero copper metabolism in my system, you know, and not able to activate that DO enzyme to clear histamine. That's where people are because we're living beyond our means, right? At the same time, toss in, people are eating chicken and eggs maybe, we're eating processed foods, we're eating vegetables, we're afraid of carbs. So we're not getting the minerals. We're not getting enough fatty fish, salmon, herring, mackerel, sardines. We're not getting enough organ meats like liver and kidney. We're not getting enough clean, whole fat dairy that's not processed, that doesn't have added synthetic A and D in it, right? And we're not getting enough clean eggs. Those are the foods that we really need to add into our system that are going to support copper metabolism. Now, of course, with carbs and proteins and really personalizing that to meet our needs. So now the demands being placed on us don't exceed what the system can handle. We're meeting our needs. We're reducing stress. We're decompensating. We're building up copper. And now we're able to clear histamine over a period of time. And here's a little caveat. And we've written about this and talked about it. Um... A lot of people recommend desiccated kidney because it contains the DO enzyme, but a lot of people have a reaction to the desiccated kidney supplement, right? Um, so what we do with a lot of people is we have them actually eat kidney and you can buy it online, you as well as meats, whether they make a shake with it, whether they sear it, make a pate, however they want to do it. And it helps them tremendously. Why? Because kidney, not only does it contain tons of minerals like copper and fat soluble vitamins, but it and naturally contains the DO enzyme. So it's a great food source for people with histamine issues. So let's move beyond blaming food.
And let's take responsibility for our health and say, how do I get here? And what do I need to change? What blocking factors do I need to pull out to reduce stress, right? Number one, to support cough metabolism so I'm not blowing it up anymore. So I can de-stress my system and stop chelating. How do I need to eat to meet my needs? And what foods do I need to bring in to support energy production and copper metabolism so I can start reducing inflammation, reducing the amount of histamine that's being produced and activate the DEO enzyme. Any questions, ask them below. As always, thanks for tuning in.